Welcome viewers, thanks for tuning in to my channel, and I'm glad that you can join with me today for another TV box stop review. On today's video, I have a full review of the H96 Max H2, Rockchip RK3328 Android 7.14K TV box. Coming up next, you have performance benchmarks and live demonstrations, so stay tuned, you have more in a moment. So I'm back, and let's take a look at the package. The H96 Max H2 comes in this black cardboard box with no specifications labeled anywhere on the outside. So without further ado, I'll unpack the contents inside. So in the box, you get the H96 Max H2 TV box itself. You get this infrared remote. I always emphasize that these remotes will work well to control the basic functions of the box, but if you intend on performing more advanced functions like installing Kodi add-ons or playing Android games, a Bluetooth Air mouse or mini touchpad keyboard would be a better option. You get one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps universal DC power adapter, and a quick setup user's guide. Let's examine the box. The housing is made of plastic, with the H96 Max H2 logo clearly displayed at the top. To the back, you have one HDMI port, one USB 2.0 port, you have one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, you get one SPDIF 3.5mm port, one audio video port, and your DC power input. To the side, you have two more USB 2.0 ports and one USB 3.0 port. There's nothing on the other side but some ventilation holes. To the front, you have a blue LED power light. And to the bottom, you have some ventilation holes. So I'll now connect the box to my TV, and move on to the next segment. So I'm back. And as I start up the box, you have a short Android startup animation which takes a few seconds. Then you're taken to the launcher. The launcher is the same launcher we have seen used in the H96 Pro Plus, and in the H96 Max in 2017. It is fast, easy to use, with the ability to add shortcuts by simply clicking the Add button and selecting which app you would like to add or remove. This launcher comes with a navigation bar and status bar for easy navigation and multitasking. Let's take a look at the app section. In the apps section, it comes with your regular set of utility apps including the SuperUser application, which I will be testing later on for permissions with key mapping applications. And I also see that they have included some streaming applications like Netflix, Showbox, Cloud TV, Film on Live, Bobdro and Kodi. So to complete my review, I'll install some system information and benchmarking apps of my own, and when I return, I'll move on to the next segment. So I'm back, and first I'll check to see if the box is rooted. And it shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 7.1.2 Nougat operating system. As a TV box user this is great news, because having root access on your box allows you to download and install any app you like from the Google Play Store without restrictions. This is more so important if you intend on using keymapping applications to play Android games. I now show the DRM information. The DRM info shows that the H96 Max H2 only has support for Google Wide Vine and CENC Clear Key. However, it has recently been proven that despite a box not having the necessary DRM support, it is still capable of playing Netflix and YouTube in 4K quality, using the app version found on the Aptoid App Store. Fortunately, the both versions from the Aptoid App Store comes pre-installed on the box. I'll now show its system and hardware information. It shows that the manufacturer is Rockchip, and the model is the H96 Max. 
below it shows that the box comes with 4 GB of RAM, and here it shows the remainder of RAM and internal storage after the Android installation and apps installed on the box. The CPU is the Rockchip RK332864 bit quad core processor running up to 1.5 GHz. Below it also shows that the box has support for both 32 and 64 bit ABIs, which allows the box to run both 32 and 64 bit applications. The display is powered by the ARM Mali 450 GPU, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz. The box has dual band 5.8 GHz Wi Fi support, and Wi Fi Direct is supported. The version of Android installed on the box is Android 7.1.2 Nougat, and below again it shows that the box is rooted. The temperature of the box is between 55 to 70 degrees Celsius on normal room temperature, and around 45 to 50 degrees on passive cooling. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos like H.264, HEVC, and VP9 decoding, and a couple of others all needed for the playback of HD media. And that's it for system and hardware information, and I'll now move on to the benchmarks. First, I'll show the memory read and write speeds. The H96 Max H2 has a RAM copy speed of 3404 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 36 MB per second and a write speed of 33. And the SD card reader has a read speed of 21 MB per second and a write speed of 13. These scores are OK, but it's not very high at the same time. I'll now show the results of the Wi-Fi speed test. I tested both the 2.4 and 5.8 GHz bands on my 40 MB internet package, and the results show that on the 5.8 GHz band, the box hit the maximum speed of my internet package with every try. However, on the 2.4 GHz band, it fell below the maximum speed by as much as 35%. What this means, is that the H96 Max H2 is better off using the 5.8 GHz band or an Ethernet LAN connection. I now have the results of the new version of the Antutu benchmark. Keep in mind that this new version produces a score that's a bit higher than the previous version. The results show that the H96 Max H2 got an Antutu score of 57,197. This score is OK for a TV box in its class. And now I have the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. This benchmark carries out a series of time tasks, and upon completion of these tasks, a score is given on how fast the box completed each task. So in the end, the H96 Max H2 got a Geekbench 4 score of 548 single core, and 1492 multi core. These scores are OK, and consistent with other boxes in its class. For my final benchmark, I have the Ice Storm Extreme GPU benchmark, part of the 3D Mark series of GPU tests tailored to a specific Android mobile device. When all tests were complete, the H96 Max H2 got an Ice Storm Extreme score of 3835. This score is a bit below average than what I would have expected from a box in this class, which should have been between 4000 and 5000. As we're on the topic of streaming, I mentioned earlier that the H96 Max H2 comes pre-installed with the Android TV version of YouTube and Netflix, which allows them to play in 4K quality despite not having the required DRM support. I won't be able to show you guys the Netflix in 4K because I don't have the required account, but I will show you that YouTube can run in 4K on this box. Keep in mind, that this is the Android TV version found on the Aptoid App Store, and it is best navigated with the stock remote, or a mini touchpad keyboard with direction pad, or what some people call a D-pad. So as you can see, the YouTube app runs in 4K quality on this box. And that's it for streaming, and I'll now test the box's ability to play downloaded 4K video samples. Also keep in mind, I am running these samples off the box's internal storage and not an external device that can have slow read speeds that can affect the quality of the playback.
well that went quite well. Most of my 4K video samples played without issues, with the exception of the Jellyfish video at 400 megabits per second bitrate. It started off to play smoothly, then started sticking soon after. This can be expected, as this Jellyfish video sample is usually the hardest to play, even for high-end boxes. For my final demonstration, I'll be playing a game to test the box's 3D rendering performance, and at the same time, I'll be testing the root permissions with my keymapping application for compatibility. A keymapping app is used to map a gamepad buttons to touchscreen functions, giving you the ability to play any Android touchscreen game that would not normally be accessible on a TV box. Unfortunately, the keymapping application failed under the super user permissions, so I decided to install a game called Real Racing 3, which is a game developed with gamepad compatibility, and there's no need for a keymapping app to play. So let's take in some racing action. So the game ran smoothly, the graphics rendering wasn't the best, but the game was very playable. It's a pity I couldn't get the keymapping app to work to see how it would have done against more high graphics games. So to summarize this review, let's take a look at the pros and cons of this device. I'll start with the pros. The H96 Max H2 is a great TV box for streaming free movies and TV shows via Kodi or movie streaming APKs. It can play YouTube and Netflix videos in 4K quality. The benchmark scores are average, but within acceptable range. It played 99% of my 4K video samples with ease. And the box is rooted, with a navigation bar and status bar on the launcher for easy navigation. On the low side, the box comes with an infrared remote. What I am suggesting, is that an included Bluetooth remote would have been a nice addition. It had a slight difficulty playing the Jellyfish video at 400 megabits per second. The 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band couldn't meet the maximum speed of my internet package. And lastly, my keymapping app failed to function correctly under the superuser permissions. With that said, I am recommending the H96 Max H2 as a good box to buy. So I've come to the end of my review of the H96 Max H2 Android TV box. If you're interested in this box, a link was placed in the description area below this video for the lowest price offer online. Thanks for watching, remember to click the like button on this video if you found it informative, share it with your social media friends, and subscribe to this channel by clicking the red subscribe button along with the notifications bell, to be notified when I release more TV box stop videos.